I'm JJ Barrera in Puerto Rico. Mass Insider starts right now. Another off-season edition of Mavs Insider, which means we have got twice as many hoop nuggets for you. I am Allie D, and this is the distinguished Bro Parish. Distinguished, huh? I like that, Allie. Now, we've got a whole bunch planned for you today. Not only are we going to go to Puerto Rico and tell you about J.J. Barrett and how big of a star he is Ooh. down there, but, you know, Dallas Mavericks dancers auditions have come and gone, so we have a brand new team, and we're going to reveal it exclusively right here. That's right, but first, the Mavs have been making a lot of moves this offseason, so let's check in with the top dog, GM Donnie Nelson, for more on that. Thank you very much, Allie Dean Rome. Here with the guy that's got his finger on the button, so to speak, for the Dallas Mavericks, GM Donnie Nelson. Is is this type of time of year fun for you and that you've got your hands all over the Play-Doh to kind of mold the team the way you like it, or is it more pressure-packed no, because you've got to get it right? I wouldn't describe it as fun. A um, lot of hours, uh, but it's what we do. It's what we sign up for, and um, uh, but it certainly is active. We haven't had a chance to talk to you since the draft. Um, love to go over, move by move, basically, how things have gone this offseason. Jason Kidd, with your plan going into the offseason, was that basically an essential move? That was our uh, first priority. Um, it's funny, every uh, free agent that came through Dallas, that was the first question that he had was, was Jason going to be back? And, um, you know, he's our quarterback. He's one of the best to ever play the position, and we needed to get him back. That was the first domino, and um, yeah, we got him back in the Mavs uniform. We're excited about it. Biggest name coming into town, New Jersey, obviously going to be the Matrix, I guess. Um, how difficult was that negotiation? A lot of teams involved, a lot of pieces involved, and then how great is it to have him on this roster? What's he going to bring? Well, we're going to have hopefully Matrix squared with Josh on one wing and him on the other. Um, you know, Jason making plays in the middle. It's going to be really exciting uh, internally. We just. You know, we wanted to add uh, some athleticism and uh, shooting, and here's a guy that's, you know, seen and done it all. He, he knows what, it's, what it takes to win um, playoff games. Uh, four team deals are not easy, and uh, this one happened relatively quickly. Next up, Drew Gooden. A lot of new pieces. He's obviously a very physical one. LeBron not too happy to have him leave town when he did. Is he going to bring the physicality to the middle of the floor that uh, you've been sorely lacking? Yeah, we wanted uh, an athletic punch, not just at the 2-3, uh, but also in the front court. You know, with Dirk, you have Eric Dampier, that's kind of our aircraft carrier, uh, defensive shot blocker, rebounder. You know, he'll see time against you know, the, the heavies in the West, but we also wanted to go with another piece that was versatile, a runner. Uh, athletic, a guy that could extend defenses, and uh, Drew Gooden's perfect. He's, you know, 27 years young uh, with a significant upside, and if things go well uh, this year in Dallas, we're also in a position, uh, because of the way we uh, structure the contract, that uh, we could have a nice opening for him to be here in the long term. Can you deal with Tim Thomas, I guess? Yeah, Tim again. He, he, Tim's a guy that, uh, if he was on our team last year, he would have been our second best three-point shooter. Um, he can extend defenses. He's a veteran uh, at 6'10". He can play multi-positions um, uh, and a guy that knows what it takes to win games. And um, you know, he's he is on a contract here as is uh, Gooden and some of the other guys. Um, and so it's going to be a, an important year for uh, for all of us. And um, finally, last question, probably most important question, most Mavs fans want to know, is this what the roster is going to look like? Are we done dealing or are we done molding the clay? Yeah, I would say that we're pretty much punched in the end zone at this point. Um, again, we've uh, coming in, we had our wish list of athleticism and, and three-point shooting, getting guys that know how to win uh, playoff games. Uh, we want to add to our depth. And uh, yeah, I think this is going to be the group we go to war with. But you never say never, especially in Maverickville. The phone rings, you answer. Amen. One bit of news that Donnie had no control over was the Mavs schedule that was released early in August. The franchise's 30th season and ninth inside the American Airlines Center opens October 27th against the Washington Wizards. But seven of the next 10 games after the opener will be on the road. All in all, there will be 13 nationally televised games for Dallas, plus another seven that will be on NBA TV. And of course, don't forget the ultimate home contest, the All-Star Game, which will be coming to the Metroplex this year from February 12th to the 14th.
Of course, when new players arrive, that means that someone has to go for there to be a roster spot, and one of those headed out of town was Brandon Bass. Bass turned his free agency and two successful seasons with the Mavs into a four-year deal with the Orlando Magic. Over the past two years, Bass had become a fan favorite, and at his final Boys and Girls Club event in the Metroplex last month, he said the feelings were mutual. It's definitely tough because, uh, I, I, you know, I, I love playing with my teammates. Uh, love the city of Dallas. My family loves the city of Dallas, but, uh, I mean, it's tough, but it's life, though. You know, that's life in the NBA, you know. Um, decisions have to be made and um, you know and you got to live with them but I'm, I'm, I'm extremely happy with the situation I'm going into I know it's gonna work out for the best and uh, I'm ready for it to start Puerto Rico is a beautiful nation of four million people most of which are United States citizens but despite that fact and a long history of athletic achievement only four Puerto Ricans have ever played in the NBA and currently there is only one the Dallas Mavericks, J.J. Barea. When he was three and a half years old, he could dribble with both hands, and he made the, the all-star team for the five and six-year-olds. He was always very aggressive, and he was not afraid of playing with taller guys. So that courage that he played with uh, was the, the thing that helped him. What I found most interesting is I play down here with the family dogs and look at the asphalt that JJ used to play on as a kid, how it's all jutted up and uneven at this point, and how you look up at the rim that has no net, it still has the logo on it that was the dream of the NBA that JJ was able to fulfill. What do you think the odds are that an NBA player came off of this court? Oh, I think it has about 2%. <laughs> Eventually, JJ and his family would be the last ones laughing. From grade school to college, to the Puerto Rican national team, to the NBA, Barea has always overcome. Over this offseason, JJ allowed us to visit him in his home country, where he's become a superstar. When I'm around San Juan and other places, everybody knows me, so. But it's, everybody's over here is friendly. It's all about having fun. They want to know what's going on over there. I just tell them a little bit, but it's, it's beautiful down here, so it's like a little vacation, too. People are here are very friendly, so they. In Dallas, you will see that, that they will say, that's J.J. Barea, you know, and say hello, you know, shy a little bit. Over here, they don't know him. They, they are walking in the street and say, hey, J.J., you know, where is Mr. J.? They got a picture with him. <laughs> and, they, you know, people are touching him and say, what the kid is you? But that's the way it is here, you know, it's funny. Yeah. Mavs Insider, let's go party. <laughs> Stay tuned in the upcoming weeks as Mavs Insider cameras take you across the entire country of Puerto Rico. From the court where he learned how to play to a wedding party with JJ's friends. It's the whole story of the improbable rise from a backyard court to the center court at the AAC. It's the JJ Barea story and it will only be found here on Fox Sports Southwest. Up next, lace up your dancing shoes. We'll head to Mavs Dancer Tryouts when Mavs Insider continues.